Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. My name is Danny Klein. Guys, what's going on, man? It's Christopher Steinbrook, the one and only. Let's so, go. Yep, we're out here. We're just freestyling, and uh, they pulled us off the floor. Our guys are running around like crazy. They're making calls. You know, we just finished our brand new sales office, and uh, we figured we'd jump on here, deliver you guys some value, deliver you guys some some cool stuff, and a little bit more of a relaxed environment to get to know me, get to know Steinbrook, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll roll through, interview him, rolling through some few questions, and uh, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, let's start off with, with this. Let me. Uh, are, are you sure they're ready? Yeah, I don't know. Are you guys ready? Are you guys seriously ready? So, Chris, you're... 43 years old. Correct. Right. Tell tell me a little bit about your backstory before coming, like, like when you were younger, like from 18. Okay. So 18 years old, I was still in Chicago. Um, I didn't really do the college thing like normal people, like the whole success, like, oh, my God, I got to go to college. Yeah, I, I dropped this. out. Yeah, dude. I was like, restaurants. I, I, at 18? I, no, I took a chance at 15. 15. 15 years old. Legal? I went to Chili's. My sister got me a job at Chili's. I was like, man, I can do this. This is this is awesome. I'm scared, totally scared. Welcome to Chili's, baby. Right, I was a chili head. <laughs> <laughs> I think every person honestly starts out at Chili's. Hey, I was delivering the good old Chinese food, man. Oh, I know you. White were. rice, dumplings. Oh, yeah. So I started at Chili's, and I was I, like, I was surprised. I was good at it, mm-hmm. like really good at hospitality. I could relate to customers super, super easy. Yep. They're like, oh, it's your blue eyes. I'm like, no, dude, I'm really good. <laughs> Try not to be egotistical, but so I worked at Chili's. Got a transfer. My whole family moved down to Florida. Mm -hmm. So we went to Tampa Bay. And it's always been one of those, like, what are you good at? If you're really good, why are you settling for just chilies? Ooh. So I moved in, and this this girl comes in. She's like, I've never seen anything like this. You're an amazing bartender. Let's go to Ebor. At at what age was this? This was at 21. At 21, okay. So at 21, I started bartending the clubs in Ebor. I, I can't go into that. Let's just oh, say it was awesome. Hey, hey, all, everyone in the car business, we all came from something crazy. We came from underdog stories, you know, dog shit sandwich. We all came from mm-hmm. some crazy stuff. I think we've all done our fair share of crazy stuff. But mm-hmm. that's what's that's what builds sales warriors is, you know, whether you're going through crazy stuff or you're going through traumatic things with family, mm-hmm. you know, that's what makes us, man. Yeah. So, so, so from 21. Yeah, yeah, so fast forward, it was just, I mean, it was a whirlwind. Fine dining, five star. Um, you know, I did a country western bar for two years, mm-hmm. little tight jeans, cowboy boots. Like, I'm really good at adapting to different situations. That's that's one thing that me and you are really good at. Oh yeah. You know, the cool thing is I see the LU group as a, as a giant puzzle piece. You know, mm-hmm. everyone has different puzzle pieces. We have guys that that keep uh, keep everybody up. We have the guys that understand people at a really really high level and, and sell with tons of empathy. We have guys that sell with just freaking running you over you know getting the deal done and being understanding where you're at to to get it done so that's the cool thing is is you can learn from everybody in the company that has all these puzzle pieces Mm -hmm. um and you and you hit on that um you know we always talk about if if anybody of you guys obviously you guys follow andy elliott like the thing that really resonates and i don't think a lot of people understand this like an individual like an individual can be beat 100 percent, but a team guys think of it like a team cannot be beat a group of people that have the same purpose going absolutely crazy with the same passion and fire, you're done. It's game over. Yeah, dude, I feel like every day we're living like modern day Power Rangers, man. You know, every- <laughs> I want to be the, the Red Lion. <laughs> I mean, are they lions? Well, I'm yeah. Voltron. I'm old. Dude, I don't even remember the names. You don't even know we're, Voltron. Maybe we're like Ninja Turtles, except we got like way more. Are you old enough to know Voltron? No, man, I'm 23. Right? Like all of the lions came together to form a <laughs> super lion. It was amazing. But uh, go ahead. So at 21. So 21, I fell in love with bartending was really really good at it i could adapt to anybody it was almost like um a chameleon personality it doesn't selling, matter I mean, what you selling. are 100 percent, yeah so i fell in love with sales didn't matter at the bar you'd have the guy who's showing off the one guy who's the introvert and i would figure out the puzzle pieces like you said if i had a u-shaped bar i would get the one side talking but then i would get them talking to the other side get the flow and i would literally be able to put on a show and right. everybody would kind of like converse within each other it's like annie says put on a show worth paying for yeah, it's uh-huh. they're doing it in all industries so we fast forward, I went into management, and then I owned a restaurant in uh, Tarpon Springs. It was a pizza restaurant, it's absolutely amazing. And then, dun dun dun, COVID. Boom. COVID just ended it. 19 or, or 20, yeah, beginning of 2020. Right, so. That's when um, I got scared, that's when I found, that's yeah. when I found Andy. They so, were cutting the floor in half, man. So the restaurant kind of in Florida, I'm sure everybody knows, we went down to 25%. I was like, I can't sustain this. We're not doing takeout. They shut the beaches down. But, you know, that's another topic for another time. Yeah. Regardless of what you're, you know, comment on is on that. So I was out of work for eight months. Like, I was overqualified. I tried 
Panera Bread. I tried eight, Target. I eight tried months. Eight months I sat on the couch. I mean, that's just living off of your savings. Just savings. I mean, that that also do, does speak volumes about the work that you put in bartending to save up to be able mm -hmm. to sustain for that long. I mean, that's just nuts. Absolutely. So the eight months goes by, and it was I'll never forget it. My girl, my fiance, who actually works here, comes to home one night, and she goes, I don't understand. Why don't you go sell cars? I'm like, what? Yeah, the perception of a car sale. Hey, if you were to go to Starbucks and say, hey, what do you think of a car salesman, right? You had an interview, you interviewed 10 people, they'd say, hey, liar, cheater, right? Mm -hmm. There's not a there's not a good uh, perception when you close your eyes, you think about a car salesman versus 100%. when you think about, hey, real estate, you think clean press suit. And uh, it's all about really, really changing that because guys in the car industry, well, they get paid and uh, it's a profession mm -hmm. and there's guys that have been in it for years. That and I know like you're younger than me, but like my thing, <laughs> so living in Chicago when I was born and raised, the car salesman was like, you know, button up shirt, clip on tie. Hey, come on in. I'll get you the best deal. And we're like, <laughs> I hate this guy. He's a scumbag. But now it's so amazing because now we've moved into the 21st century. Everything's transparent. It's unbelievable. But the difference between a trained salesperson and an untrained is so apparent now. A thousand percent. A hundred percent. So we'll fast forward. I go to Clearwater Toyota. <laughs> because I was a bartender for so long, I knew the management. I knew the staff. I walked mm -hmm. in. I got a job. And that's where Andy shows up. The the coolest thing with you is, you know, you almost had the skill set. I talk about high level communication a lot, and so does Andy. I mean, that's that's the umbrella of sales is high level communication. You've been you've learned that for years, mm -hmm. which is why you were able to jump into the car industry fast and dominate and adapt to the processes mm -hmm. of selling cars and yeah. chameleon to people. And then same thing coming in our company and moving up the ranks very fast, more than anyone has in the company. And it's just really killing it. Because the biggest thing is people understand, like, and, and I fell into it. I go into car sales and you use the word sale. Sale is a transaction. We're talking mm -hmm. about a transition. So, Ooh, I like that. is that a bomb? I like that's that. a bomb. Yeah, if we're on Bradley's <laughs> podcast, we'll be dropping Sorry, the bombs. Brad, that's I'm a bomb. Here. Let me hit the little button. I love it. So, I'm talking about transition versus transaction. Now, when I went there, you know, the first three days, I'm like, I'm going to sell a car. I'm going to sell a car. Mm -hmm. Well, I had found Andy. I started watching his videos. I reached out. And we'll talk about that later. But my GM actually came to me. He goes, why haven't you sold a car? It's been a week. I was like, I don't know, because I'm trying to sell. He's like, that's not why I hired you. Step out of the sale for a second. He goes, you're one of the best bartenders I've ever seen in Tampa Bay. Like, ever. Like, every time we came in, you knew what we wanted. It was a relationship. He's like... The car lot, and for people that are in hospitality, like write this down. Make make the connection. Like write this down. The car lot is literally it's your business. Yep. If you're a bartender, it doesn't matter what you do. You got to You take ownership. So like when 100%. you're running the bar, you're taking ownership with what you're what you're running. The people coming in. Same thing on the lot. The biggest transition you can have as a salesperson, no matter what industry in the car business. You know, I don't care if you, you're a suit salesman. Doesn't matter. When they come in, you take ownership in where you sell what you do, the people that come in, mm -hmm. because guess what? You should you should walk in and they should think that you're the owner, mm -hmm. you know, because th that's how you get good business and repeats and referrals and you just serve at the highest level. Yeah, so touching on that, like I would look out in the car lot. He goes, you know, Camrys, Corollas, RAV4s, yep. Tundras. He goes like, that's a drink, that's a beer, that's a shot. That's And I'm like, I love this analogy. He goes, dude, the, the, the customer is still the same. They come on the lot because there's an itch and you need to scratch it. It's not like, I mean, let me ask you, when is the last time on your day off you were like, Man, I'm just gonna go to a car lot. Doesn't, I'm just gonna walk around for no reason. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. I'll look for on my phone for hours. And yeah. then, I mean, the average consumer. I don't know if you guys know the statistics. That's mm -hmm. a that's a tongue twister I like right that there. Word. Say it again. Statistics. Statistics. We got it. Hey, this is why. Uh, you know, Andy had an old speech impediment. Oh, I yeah. had one. We fixed it. We got it. Um, <laughs> but no. Uh, a point being is, um, you just really have to know. Mm -hmm. You have to know your inventory, guys. I mean, the biggest thing we talk about, and Andy says, the guy that gets paid is the one that knows his inventory. Mm -hmm. What do you have? What do you have to offer? Now, with that being said, we roll into the first year. I made more money. Like, the, my first month, I broke a record. I sold 37 cars in my first month. They didn't even know what happened. 37 cars in the 37 first month. 37 cars, yep. That's powerful. I mean, the only way you can do that is, number one, with work ethic. I don't care how well you know people. If you're not sitting there putting in the work, you know, a lot of guys have a problem here, have a problem getting organized to understand how to do 37 because you're selling average almost two cars a day. You're selling, you know, it's like, what, 1.4, whatever the math is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're, you're selling all day long. You're calling. You're in front of your customers. That's huge, man. Oh, yeah. That's huge. So and, then, then, and then scale forward to what? I mean, you finished out your first... Full year 
Mm -hmm. At first, my first full year, I finished out and I made just under half a million with Andy. Just under half a million. And you were only in the car business for well, exactly one year. One year. I think that speaks volumes because a lot of people think, hey, I only sold for less than two years. He sold for one year. Well, it's not about the, the time and tenure in the business, how long you're in and what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? But how fast can you grow and scale? That right there is a product of the training going from what, I mean, were you making just over six figures bartending? Oh, absolutely. To 500. Yeah. Time just and insane. experience. The, the thing you said that resonates the most, uh, time and experience means nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you guys are 19 years old, you're 40 years old. Like every second of every day, there's something my grandfather told me a long, long time ago, and it really, really stuck with me. If you don't like your situation, change it. Change it. You're not stuck. Yep. You're just unmotivated. Every they can't second, see through people. A lot of yeah. people can't see through a different lens. <laughs> yeah. Like, every second of every day, you can start over if you don't like the path you're on. Dude, just it, it's you. I agree. It's a you're choice. You're the one standing in your own way. It's a choice. It kind of brings me, you know, just to tell a little bit of the guys, you know, my story. I love you, it. You Go said, for it. You said, like, the choice, mm -hmm. right? The choice was made for me to really elevate my life. It wasn't when I initially first started training with Andy, which I'll go to that. But, you know, when my dad passed away, I made the choice that, like, hey, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to create something for my family, for me, for this company, for everything that, you know, I thought about wanting and didn't really have the mindset to do or didn't have the work ethic, didn't have anything, you know, no right vehicle. A lot of times we talk about being in the right vehicle. Mm -hmm. well, number one, the car business is the right vehicle. It's the best business to be in. But for a lot of people, though, it's the way out. It's the and way they out. don't understand it. It's the way out. They see the money. And then if they do it the right way, it can be yep. a life change. 100%, especially for all like my young guys out there. At 23 years old now, I got in the car business when I had just turned 20. And uh, I mean, I was delivering Chinese food for about a year. I dropped out of school, lived in a one bedroom apartment with my dad, food stamps, disability, the whole deal. And it's not like a sympathy show, but the deal, I was happy. I mean, I was happy with like my life, but I was not happy in terms of, I don't, I don't wanna live that way for my family, mm -hmm. right? I don't wanna, I wanna make more money. I wanna be more successful. You know, I was happy here, but not like, not truthfully fulfilling my purpose. And that's the word right there, fulfilled. Yeah, truly it's, fulfilled. it's all about being fulfilled. I could drive, you know, a little Civic and, you know, be in a little trailer and be doing this and I would be happy because my heart's full, I'm helping people. I mean, it's just insane the people that come down getting to, to actually meet these people, give them a big old hug. I mean, dude, I've given freaking pe people kisses on the cheek when they come down. We I mean, give Nelson we a kiss on the forehead. People. Yeah, Nelson. <laughs> I mean, we're crazy, man. But, um, but, but that's, no, that's yeah, the difference. I, so my six months, so, so to tell my story about when I first kind of met Andy, I was selling for about oh, six months. And you were Toyota as well? Yep, I was at Toyota. Okay. Guys, I was a eight car hand. I think my best month was like 11, right? Boom, COVID hits. I'm like, shit. Mm -hmm. My store is old school. They're raw. It was in Woodbridge, Virginia. It's a store called uh, Lestine Toyota. You can go check them out. You know, I didn't go and do 50 cars a month, but the deal is I went from selling about eight cars a month to I hit my first 23, 23 car month, made $17,000 in a matter of 30 days after my first Master Closer seminar. That's strong. That's insane. At 20 years old, I'm like, dude, this change, this is life changing. That's, that's life changing that's money. That's $200,000 a year, mm -hmm. just like that. And I'm like, wow. So I see my potential. I start going crazy. I keep scaling and growing. Now, how did you get there? And how I, did you go from an eight car hand all the way up there? Well, I think the biggest thing, honestly, so was the mindset switch. Mm -hmm. So when I first came out to a seminar, I learned massive skill. I learned massive closes, all these things, money justification. The training was sick, but I went back and I saw who I could really become. You know, I, I just started to really believe that like, hey, I can do it. I am the one, like I'm worth it. Mm -hmm. And I just decided to not focus on anything else, not focus on other people, conversations, non-income producing activities like Andy talks about. 100%. And just went crazy mm -hmm. and then scaled and scaled. I transferred, I had all, uh, a position that was offered to me to help run a store and do finance as well. And Andy calls me. Well, let me ask this. When Andy reached out to you, much like me, because I want to hear your story first. Yeah. When he reached out to you, did you have the scarcity mindset that you were like, oh my God, I'm, I'm at rock bottom? Yeah, I was a little skeptical, um, but the way that it was just so authentic, I'd never had a conversation like that. I think we talked for about 30 minutes and uh, it just moved me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I hung up. We didn't, you know, do the seminar. I was like, man, let me figure out some stuff. And I drove back into work the next day and I'm just stuck. It's sticking in my head. And I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. This is back when Andy had 5,000 subscribers and seminars were just starting. 
So I'm out here and I'm like, you know what? I did like an OG. There was no, yeah, there was no hype videos or anything really crazy. It was just raw skill teaching guys from, from around the country and they were doing Zooms and stuff, Sean and Andy. Mm -hmm. So I call Andy and I'm like, hey, I'm in. I text him a picture of my card. I said, run it. You know, I don't need a payment plan. I'm in like, you know, whatever you got, it sounds like you can do better than me, right? Like you, you're speaking better than me. You're selling better than me. I'm just stepping out and I'm like, I'm sold just because of the way you speak and the way you motivate. And if I can learn that, then I'll go to the next level. If I can motivate my customers, if I can bring my team up, mm. it's game over. I didn't really know. I'd only watched about three YouTube videos. Well, the thing that hit me, you just said, I want to go back to it. You're like, mm -hmm. what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could that, happen? That's a mindset shift, guys. Like a lot of it. So when I reached out to Andy, I did the same thing. You, a lot of you guys are like lurking in the backgrounds. You watch, you watch, and you're waiting for the perfect opportunity. Guys, what is the worst that can We're happen? We're cool, man. That's if you the, literally we went gain, through the same process. If you gain 5%, Five percent on even if it's a two ninety nine investment, a thousand, whatever. I, I tell like, guys just reaching out to have the opportunity to have a conversation with you, whether you make an investment or not. Number one, an investment will change your life, but just connecting with us that will, will switch switch your mindset there, and you'll start to see a better version of yourself. You'll start making more money from our coaching. We have different things, but mm -hmm. you know, just reaching out and getting to connect with you guys first of all is the biggest thing. It's huge. Yeah, just taking that one step. I mean, are uh, you? I always, are you, are, I always are, tell guys like, hey, for the guys that have been watching multiple videos and seeing the gains. If you had to write out the check That's for how powerful. much YouTube con ha content has made you, would it be X amount? Mm -hmm. I mean, just ask yourself. You know, we're putting out value, and he's putting out value because they aren't ready for what happens next. It's fire. I mean, we got some cool stuff planned for you guys, but this leads me to kind of go into uh, to what I was talking about. But long story short, um, I switched doors, mm -hmm. and then you know, dad passes away. He drowns in a pool. It's be just, huge, huge. I'm just like shit, man. He was my goal, you know, go, he's like the, the golden, you know, egg of the family. You know, we're all real close, really tight, and uh, I'm devastated. The next day, Andy calls me, he's like, we're moving to Phoenix, and uh, I want you on the team. It's like uh, God had handed me this opportunity on a golden platter, just That's was like, powerful. Hey, here's your purpose, you go, you have a servant heart, you're a leader, and I just said, dude, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. 30 days later, I'm out here, we're grinding in Phoenix, and here we are, been with him for about a year and a half. And that's the big difference, man. When he talks about a servant heart, like, and nothing against other training companies, like, there's so much value out there, guys. Like, whether you train with us, whether you train with, it doesn't matter who it is. As long as you're investing and getting better, mm -hmm. like, stop being complacent. Like, Brad talked about it when we went on the podcast. This, this is huge. I'm going to touch on this. Do you remember when he's like, you know, these guys are talking about, I want to live to 100 years old. And he's like, what does that mean? <laughs> Do you want to literally have somebody put a blanket on you, feed you three meals sit a day, a sit you up in a corner, nice make sure warm, nobody fuzzy. touch you? Like, I want to go out with a bang, man. Dude, I could be, I could be, I could go out like, uh, like pops. My dad lived a full life. I could go out like him and uh, be a legend. I'll be happy because I left it all on the table. I closed my eyes, knowing that everything, you know, he gave everything to our family. You know, he went. He was, you know, shit. He had lived such. A, he had lived three lives over. So it's like for me, I'm gonna do the same thing. I, I go tomorrow. I'm cool. You know? And you want to make him proud. Yeah, of course. And you are. Man. I mean, of you course. are. Guys, you know? Danny's a beast. I'm just going to tell you right now, like, we have a lot of coaches. This guy, I mean, look at his smile. Come on, man. Look at his smile. That's contagious. Just happy, man. Just a positive guy. I'm always just... And check out the TikTok yesterday with the book. I mean, oh, he was sweating. Yeah. No, not a TikTok. <laughs> We're not doing TikTok <laughs> dances, but we made a funny video. If uh, you guys are seeing stuff on the Deadly Scripts book, feel free to reach out, 918-210-0254. Right. If you guys want the Deadly Scripts book, you guys have seen it. It does out. come with a warning. I'll tell you. Yeah, like, it's a warning. We, we, we sent out some pampers with it because you just, <laughs> I mean, you guys are done, man. It's it's going to help you make more money. And look, don't reach out and think it's a, this is not a $10 book. It's an investment. It's a badass book. It's and ask yourself, how, how many $10 books do you have that you use as coasters? Nope. You, there's nothing you can do. You can't watch a video and make a phone call. I mean, I'm just going to say this. There's no pitch, but you can't make a phone call and then watch a video. But what you can do is read off a script. Mm -hmm and grow, run them through the process, yep. set appointments, make money. Your Simple. words. Use your words. If, if Andy had this, I would have paid probably 10 grand for this. I mean, it's but that, got about the, 20 grand in value easily. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. But um, bottom line is I kind of want to go into um, the biggest problem of salesmen. Mm -hmm. um, what your thoughts are. I have some things that I think, right, like advice on success. There was a video a few days back. I think it was like a week or two old. He talks about car salesman's the biggest problem. What, what what is your take on you know what's the number one thing that comes to mind for you for a salesman's biggest problem that holds them back from really going to the next level? Well, 
I'm glad you asked. There's two things. Number one is a scarcity mindset. Like right now, the market's up 300%. doesn't matter. You could sell ping pong balls. You could sell pool tables. It doesn't matter. It's ridiculous. It's insane. Gas but, is up. Milk is up. Right. You guys are paying through the freaking roof. Yep. But with that scarcity mindset, you guys are asking all these people to pay all the dough, but there's no believability. Yep. It's the market. It's not you. I mean, it might be you if you're training, mm -hmm. but everybody gets so comfortable. And the biggest thing is, who do you surround yourself with? You have a bunch of sales guys, right? You put all this time in. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I, I, and I'll say this, when I reached out to Andy, I was like, man, I, I want to go to a seminar. This is going to be life changing. I went to the dealership. I told four people, and then I never told anybody after. They're like, no. that's, that's, what do you mean? Stay what does focused. that mean? Stay that's focused, stupid. Man. Everyone's going to try to talk you out of it because everyone has a different idea and advice on success. <clears throat> right? Yeah. And, and hey, I went and studied my top guy until I didn't. Mm -hmm. right guy was doing 20 cars a month i'm like shit dude let me let me follow what you're doing right he helped me make phone calls he helped me understand things and then well i found a guy who did more and i went to study him and it's like that's what it's all about you, you got to take advice from the people that are going to lead you to where you want to go and the big don't thing take is advice from guys doing 10 cars hey training's corny you don't need to do that mm -hmm. uh why are you listening i mean why do you really care about it's the, the guy that's of other people. Yeah, it's the guy that's been at the dealership for 10 years and he's still a 12 car hand. Yeah, he's, he's doing hey, man, 12, 15 in, cars a month. He has He's going into real estate. Yeah, he's got yeah, <laughs> he's going into real estate. No, we love real estate. Um, but the deal is is you you're, some there's some guys that are doing 12 to 15, they live off of you know, half of more referrals and then it's nothing. I mean, you could be doing 30, 40, 50 cars a month. Mm -hmm. But um, bottom line is everyone has a different advice on success. And another thing too, I think is huge is a lot of people are more concerned about the money and me and you are like, really, really we've talked about this a few times, hundred times. Yeah. Uh, they're very concerned about just the money and hey, look, I'm concerned about the money too. But uh, there's a there's an old saying, there's a string from your heart attached to your wallet. 100%. Right. So you have to get to the heart to get to the wallet. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you can do that is by being real, raw, authentic. And hey, look, sometimes that's not a magic objection or word track, even though you need to know them to close and move the sale forward and understand how to, you know, recognize their concerns. But sometimes it's just leaning back on being raw and authentic and, mm -hmm. and having passion for what you do. Um, so, I mean, what's your take on, you know, passion versus like transaction? Like, what do you think? Like, ROI most people are looking like that was it I was let's talk get this that. deal done and I'm like hey why don't I understand what this customer is really going through so I can help them get the deal done and I can help explain them hey maybe where they're spending money in other areas mm -hmm. that's and, like uh, an onion you, you gotta have the wall the down when you're negotiating right because hey we're not really negotiating well you don't want to say hey don't buy the car Jimmy's gonna you know Jimmy's gonna come in at five that's unprofessional. It's not nice. Like you don't even really want to say that and they're not going to come back. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just negotiate with some, I say empathy and energy, 100%. negotiate with some empathy and some energy, which mm -hmm. is, Hey, I understand. Right. And just pushing that through. So um, what's your take on like, you know, love versus you know, transactional. So transactional is super easy. Like Andy talks about the other day. He's like, you know, you, you go to the convenience store, get a bottle of water, right? They do a little, boop, it's three bucks. Yep. That's it. There's nothing. It's just, it's a transaction. I thanks buy. for buying the water. I buy, thanks. But you go in, and that one guy's like, oh, I seen you in here before, man. I really like that shirt. Oh, my God. This is one of the best waters I've ever seen. This is amazing. You got great taste. You know what? You'll that probably get, water, yeah, baby. you'll get thirsty later. You should probably get another one, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Boom. The question is, <clears throat> and I've heard this before, and this is something I live by, the currency of 2022, the way that we are going to get paid and move people is relationships. Wow. I think that's that's one of the most powerful things because this this transition that we've gone through, we're distancing, we're doing zooms, we're less involved with human interaction. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to to really be close with our people and really understand that like we have to connect, we have to truly care. I always say this, I always say this. Do you truly care about your customers? They'll 100%. say yes. Okay, well why don't they feel it? And that's a skill problem because you may really care and your heart may have the right intentions, but if you can't push that through, that transfer of emotion to the customer, they're not gonna feel it. Mm -hmm. If you haven't trained on the things to say, well, they won't feel it. They'll, so so you'll, I'm, gonna, you'll, I'm gonna hit you something really real back. quick. So the last car you bought, right? Yep. This, well, this is probably not an unfair question because you know the guy, but yeah, if I were to ask- Dealer yeah, partner yeah, and everything. If, if I were gonna ask, up. but for the normal consumer, walk to him and say, hey, let me ask you something. The last car you bought, what was the salesman's name? 
99 percent of the people don't guy. know he was a great guy they don't know guys you're not moving the customer you should be so good at your job that you make everybody else look like amateurs so good at your job who you are yep. what you do how amazing you are at your job and how do i find you andy talks about it all the time it's reach yep. what Re is your reach yeah, what's your you, reach th this is not a you know i don't even know the right business to talk about because every business is great but you're not there to be a consumer build your business build your brand yep. have undeniable believability number one in what you do and how do you reach these people i mean i was i sold in florida i would get deals all the way from like you know washington state you just gotta stay a student of the game man you know i study everybody just like andy studies everybody obviously i study andy massively you want to know what they know hey i sell andy if you guys don't know right like mm -hmm. we're, we're selling andy we're training we're we're helping people come to seminars we're helping people start on the training you know we're your coaches we're the guys that can help you really understand where to start how to do it what steps to implement um so that's everything you just gotta stay soon in the game man mm -hmm. Because it's easy I, to sell something. Yeah. It's, and again, the, which we talked about, it's not, it's not you. It's the market. Mm. It's the market right now, guys. If you would literally take a step back, check yourself. When the market shifts, you're, you're, I mean, are you going to, I mean, what I are say, you going to do? Can I say that word? You're, I know I'm going to say it. When the market shifts, I mean, there's going to be so much stuff going on. The prices are going to go back. When I was selling, I mean, we listed at like two grand brackets. Mm -hmm. Right, like that was aggressive. You're already a five or fifteen hundred. You're five grand. Then you right. got a rebate. You're at a five hundred dollar loser, and you're working up. Now, I mean, most cars. I mean, we're, we're averaging four grand a copy. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's just unheard of across the country. And the pay plans are dictating these guys have. I mean, yep. Like one of my dealerships that I partner with. I mean, right now the yep, guys. Like, I'm, like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what do you, you know, what do you make a copy? Like, what is your commission? And he told me he was like, I, I was making three hundred a car, hustling going absolutely crazy and these guys are making 1300 a car and then laying down at 10 I'm mm -hmm. like I don't get it you gotta worry you had, we had to work up for minis man it's crazy um they have no idea how good they have it it kind of leads me to so I got a few points here you know car, a car sales is the biggest problem another thing that Andy said is you know money's not the problem it's your attitude and your mindset mm -hmm. and that's the biggest thing and I know we talk about mindset and there's a lot of motivation a lot of energy a lot of information coming your way but the bottom line is if you don't have this together consistently at scale, meaning daily, hourly, you, when you're having conversations, if you lose it for 30 minutes, like what, what's the problem? And we're cool. We had a great life. You got a car, you got a family. You know, if you're behind and you're trying to go to the next level and you want help, well, hey, reach out. But bottom line is, is everything's cool. Just understand that you have to scale, you have to grow and you have to have a, a higher purpose. I always say this, you have a higher purpose in selling cars, mm -hmm. you know? You're, you're selling cars is, is a vehicle to help you really elevate and to, to create a life for you and your family. Because it's not just a piece of metal. I think a lot no. of people, that goes back to the transaction. Mm -hmm. Are you actually qualifying these people? What are their needs? Like, I don't think a lot of people just say, hey, I'm looking for this car. And they just go in for it. They just go for the kill. Dude, you, you got to warm up the <laughs> oven before you stick the turkey in. You know what I mean? I love that, man. It's true. Yeah, you can't I, just go straight for it. It's like going on a date. Hey, what's up? I like you. Let's get married. Like, do you no, freak them out? It doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work, work no. dude. That's a great analogy. Like, it's funny how we think and how we operate. Everything in selling and clothes. There's analogies. We're painting pictures. We're mm -hmm. creating scenarios, future expectations. That was a big once, right there. Once you kind of understand the breakdown of it, you start talking differently. You start mm -hmm. communicating differently. It's an amazing thing. You got like a swag about you. Yeah, a little, a little swagger. swagger. Swagger is the most important thing. And I put a post out this morning talking about your style. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, I have a different style. You have a different style, right? Ian has a different style. Andy has a different style. Well, guess what? The style is closing, but don't don't use your <laughs> don't 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 make your style an excuse for not closing and not moving the needle forward. Mm -hmm. Hey, someone may be a little more soft spoken, a little more you know whatever, or someone may be super high energetic, or someone may be. It doesn't matter what it is across the spectrum. Learn your just room. understand that you need to close and convert the deals. Like there's, <clears throat> you can be a closer with anything. You remember them talking about know your audience. Know your audience. Go to your audience. Brad, Brad hit on it the other day yeah. about a C8. I, I don't know if you guys watched the reel on it about selling a C8. The guy went straight in for the kill for the horsepower, this and that, and the car ended up being for his daughter. Ask questions. Yep. Take your time. That's everything. And then so here, watch this. So there's, I got two more here that are huge. Mm -hmm. Bad habits and self really recognizing, hey, what are my bad habits? And that's not necessarily like doing drugs and drinking. It could be like, 
hey, I'm on social media too much. I'm not getting anything done during the day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having BS conversations. Like, those are bad habits because they're not income producing activities. Like if that. you understood that, well, guess what? Across the country, the average cost per copy, it's like, what, $800 commission? Maybe it's 500, mm -hmm. maybe it's 1200. At the end of the day, that's a lot of money. That's yeah. a lot of money. That we had to sell four cars to get that. Yeah, you had to sell four cars to get that. So it's like, you gotta cut the bad habits. You gotta cut the, the unhealthy things that are costing you money. Andy talks a lot about leaks versus opportunities. Ooh, I like leaks that. versus opportunities. Well, a leak is, hey, uh, I'll get back with you. Okay, hell, okay, thanks. That's a leak. An opportunity is creating your own money, doing the right things, doing the right things on social media, mm -hmm. right? Going likes to leads. Those are opportunities. And once you start to understand the breakdown of math on that, where you're really losing your money, then you're like, wow. Oh, yeah. The non income producing activities, if you add them up, yep. we broke them down. How many cars do you sell in a month? How many hours do you work in a month? And you do the math. It's, it'll, a, it's it'll an average of 15 car hand that's selling 15 cars and you're working 10 hours a day. The average is like 190 hours that you're not selling. Mm -hmm. We're either selling a car, looking for a customer, or we're training to get better. It's simple. It's I mean, if you want, it, this is if you want to come become elite, you want to become better. If you don't, then I mean, just keep going through the motions and taking ups and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. The deal is that this is for the guys that want to elevate, have a higher level income, have a higher level mindset. This is a conversation for the guys that are hungry trying to, to And sometimes better those themselves. guys that sit in the back, we talk about this a lot, they, they just need that little tip. Yeah. The, the, the moment where you're looking and it's like, man, I, I think I want to do this. The thing that scares you the most is what you should definitely do. What is the worst that could happen? We touched on that before. Yeah. What's the worst? You spend $1,000 on a seminar. You spend $5.99 on a course. Dude, get your money out of it. Yeah, get your money. No one can For, take the knowledge from you. And honestly, I challenge all any of you that have been thinking about a seminar or see the videos, follow us on social media. By the way, you can follow Chris and I. We'll drop the Instagrams here. You can give us a follow. You need to warn them, though. We're way more intense in person. Oh, yeah. We're, we're way more intense. More intense. For, uh, well, yeah. Chris will, Chris will give you a big old hug. But you have to understand that there's, there's two types of people. Watch this. I always use this analogy. There's a guy who... Got with a got with a girl, right? And he got his heart broken. And well, he went on for years and years, and he never dated another girl because he was afraid to get his heart broken. And then there was another guy that got with a girl, got his heart broken, and he started going on dates again. And this is just an analogy, right? Step out of this for a second. <clears throat> he goes on dates, dates, dates. Well, guess what? On that seventh date, he found the love of his life in a few months. Yep. The marriage, right? They had kids, family, grew up. Well, guess what? He wasn't paralyzed with fear and indecision about what to do. Wow. He was just That's attacking. That's dangerous. Right, and this is that, that's a funny analogy, but it's just the truth. It, it's it's good to explain it in a different sense because mm -hmm. then you're like, well, the guy that really wants to get better, he'll go through the risk of getting broken, getting burned, going through different things. By the way, we run the baddest program in the country. There's nothing that stacks up against us. Hands down, that's a bomb. You can, you can go and look you, you can go and look <laughs> at seminars and speaking events and different things, closers, right, closer things. They don't stack up, and guess what? They're like five, ten grand. You want to see Gary Vee? You want to see all these other guys? Nine ninety seven. You can get front row with Andy Yellett. I mean, bro. I think I told Andy we should charge five grand to see. Well, no, so you better then, get in before no, we up the prices. Like, what is it? Two hundred fifty six rows up, sitting <laughs> in the <laughs> nosebleeds. It's, it's it's insane. And I think we'll, we'll end on this. And look, guys, if you want to come to a seminar, we'll, we'll drop it again. Nine one eight two one zero zero two five four. Text Andy. Reach out to him. He'll get on the phone with you. He'll help you figure out what the game plan is for you to succeed. But. Um, I really want to talk about lack of execution and we'll end on this note. Yeah. This is the biggest thing and I could run for an hour just on this. I coach hundreds of people privately through Andy's training that are that are paying month they're paying monthly. Mm -hmm. They're paying monthly to be in coaching and there's tons of people that are doing this, right? You have a huge team. Yep. Macklin's have a huge team. Sean has a huge team that they're coaching privately to just elevate, right? Mm -hmm. But the one thing I tell my team is if you call me with a silly question about something that's in the training, well, number one, I gotta make money. I wanna go to work, right? We gotta, we're sales too. Yeah. And we're also coaches. The cool thing about what we do is we're sales and we're coaches. We're coaches, we're not babysitters. Yeah, but guess what? If he calls me and he has a higher level question, I can see that he's training. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That's the phone call I love. I'll sit down for half an hour and talk to you because I can tell that you're putting in the work. And that's what a good coach does. Well, a good coach also, also holds you accountable. This is another analogy. If you're not training and you're trying to figure out how to get better and you're sitting there asking little silly questions, well, that's like asking the, the basketball coach to, to, to help you shoot three-pointers or to help you dunk or understand a play, but you didn't show up 
at 5 a.m. to practice. He's going to tell you, you, you show up tomorrow at practice. I'm not doing that. Yeah, you got to put the work in. But then there's a guy that shows up to practice that wants to stay after. Coach will stay after. Mm-hmm. That's the same analogy. That's the difference of the one percenter. Yeah, but most people know what to do, but they don't do what they know. That's it, why personal trainers are so lucrative. You guys know, you know what to do at the gym. But yeah, why, you why? need the accountability. Yeah, you don't need another. Oh, it's five o'clock. You guys keep hitting the snooze button. Two-step system. Seven-minute abs. <laughs> Just eat healthy and work out. And look, some of you guys want to get healthier or get in shape. <clears throat> Go, just go do it. It's just a decision, right? Where this isn't a fitness podcast, but no. hey, we love working out. I think working out is huge for you. Got to have everything, body. But, but like, I don't even is. have time to go and eat out. I just want to bring healthy food and keep my energy sharp. Mm-hmm. Well, we got so much going on. No, you make time for the gym. Make time for your mindset. Everything is training, not just your mind, but your body. Are you speaking? Are you acting? Are you walking? Are you talking like the future person? We mm. talk about future expectations all the time. Fu- step into your future self. Do you see yourself like? I you, see myself as a millionaire. Do you believe in yourself? I see myself 100%. as a billionaire. You just haven't got paid yet. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but, I'm saying like your everyday actions. We talk about this all the time. Are you doing bad habits? Mm. Uh, I, I'm going to be a millionaire. And then they use that word one yeah, day. One around, day I'm going to be a millionaire. Jacking. What does that mean? Right. I'm going to get it now. What is No, what does like, that mean? What does one day mean? Day when one. you get around to it? I say Dude, day call, one. What I say, you say call your shot? I like to say day one. Right. I like that. Is it one day or is it day one? Right, of trying to get what you want. Well, it's 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 day one. No, the I'm, busiest I don't, thing was I don't that. one day anything. My biggest thing is, at the age of forty-two, I refuse to to mess with time. I won't do it. At twenty-three, I don't have time either. No, that's the biggest thing too. You guys have no idea. Like if, and I tell this to people all the time on the phone. If I were to tell you the date that it's over, it would shock you to the core. Oh, you yeah. would do. You wouldn't even think about you because that's what we do as humans. We overthink everything. Mm-hmm. What about this? What's going to happen? What about, what is the outcome? You want to live the best life in the world? Make a decision and keep moving. I like the analogy that Andy uses a lot. And if you were like Chris, like if you were to say, if you were to die in a car accident tomorrow and you were sitting there and you had 30 seconds Mm -hmm. to think, to seriously think about the life that you lived, if you were fulfilled, would you have regrets? 30 seconds, you're sitting there, you're bleeding out, it's done, it's your last, you're, you're saying bye to your family. Would you have regrets? Well, I don't know. That's a question that, that you have to answer. It's true. But the deal is is you have to play like that if you're looking to, to, to go through. And some people, look, it's not just money. It's family. It's health. It's all these different areas. The money money doesn't make you rich, right? You're rich in your heart. You're rich in fulfillment and contribution and mm-hmm. all these other areas. It's, it goes full circle. And a lot of people don't understand that until they truly start getting the money or get out of the scarcity mindset. True. It's very hard to understand. But if you can just trust what we're saying because it's the truth. Um, you get more money. It doesn't really change anything. It just well, makes things a, a little bit with, easier. It's got a lot to do with social media. Like if you yeah. see it now, everything is, when does it happen? It happens now. We're a now society. You know, social media, and don't get me wrong, like social media is great, yep. but it paints this like false pedestal. You know, you got these fake Instagram people. I got the car. I got They're the million dollar mission. I got this. It's like, They're guys, all... my question is, what is it like when the cameras are off? I know that our team, 100%, I can say this because I'm in this business 24-7. This is not a hype show. It's not fake. Yeah, Chris, when the cameras, Chris, when the cameras are off. Chris sleeps on the couch in here. In I do. Sales There's office. a little, actually, on our new table. It's awesome. It helps with my back. But yeah, <laughs> no, it, it, it's true. When the cameras are off, yeah, who nobody, are you? nobody runs like us. Who are you? Yeah. How you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah, you, don't build, you don't build a company that Annie's built and that we've helped build on... Yes, and on being a fraud. Small work ethic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you were to have a conversation with me a year and a half ago, uh, I don't even sound like the same person. I have a different mindset. You can look at my eyes and I have fire, right? Like Andy talks about. Mm-hmm. And that comes with time and discipline of consistent action. But we'll end on this, man. Look, if you guys want help, if you want to go to the next level, if you resonate with Chris Steinbrook's story or you represent with, you know, you resonate with my story, Dandy Klein. We're just a can, bunch of bro guys, yeah, we're dude. Just a, dude, yeah. We're Everybody's just a, got problems. We're just a bunch of bros that are just want to win, that just want to kill it, you know, that have good habits, that have good disciplines, that want to go to the next level and want to help you guys get there and not get there later, get there now. Yeah, slow playing success. That yeah. drives me crazy. I don't, yeah, so I, if, that, I don't understand that. I agree, man. I agree. So, hey, if you want to get in contact with us, reach out. We'll drop our Instagrams here. You can follow me at Danny underscore underscore Klein. Chris, go ahead, drop your tag. My Instagram is Coach underscore C Stein. And then go ahead. Hey, also, reach out. Reach out to Andy. Reach out to our team. Reach out to Chris. Reach out to me. 918-210-0254. You guys know the number. Appreciate you guys. You start talking differently. You start communicating differently. 
It's an amazing thing. If you get like a swag, we love you. Yeah, a little, swag. little swagger. Swagger is the most important thing. And uh, I put a post out this morning talking about your style. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, I have a different style. You have a different style, right? Ian has a different style. Andy has a different style. Well, guess what? The style is closing, but don't don't use your don't 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 make your style an excuse for not closing and not moving the needle forward. 